Father, you be magnified. God and King of all, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good morning. We are looking at the teaching that we began a couple of weeks ago entitled, If God Be For You, dot, dot, dot. And those dot, dot, dots means fill in the blank, basically. According to the word of God, if God be for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to be starting on slide 22 in review. So go to slide number 22 and meet me there in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We began looking at if God be for you where the word of God clearly reveals through John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There is an invitation to every man, woman, boy, or girl on the planet Earth to receive the gift of God's love and all that that entails because it is revealed to us through the Apostle Paul in his letter to the church at Corinth that, that, that he or actually in Ephesians I, I'm sorry that he's the God who is exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think so everything that the, the world is looking for and searching for God is plus Hallelujah. He's more than enough. Amen. And that his desire is the same as it was from the very beginning. We're in, in connecting last week's teaching with today, we, we began to look at the word of God concerning God being for man, for, for the believer, and how God is showing that and revealing that. And we were in, in over in Romans chapter 8 where the word of God says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death and what the where the, the, the law was weakened by the flesh Jesus Christ in, in flesh became the connection the, became the, the completion of what we needed that, so that we could be the recipients of the gift of righteousness. Here in Ephesians chapter 8, beginning with verse, excuse me, not Ephesians, Romans. Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 14. Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 14, connecting last week with today. The word of God says, For you have not received a spirit of slavery. This is the Amplify. The word of God in King James says, spirit of bondage you have not received a spirit of slavery leading again to fear of God's judgment but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons the spirit producing sonship by which we joyfully cry Abba Father hallelujah the intent of the message here is that you have been taken beyond God oh God I, I honor you and I reverence you and I, I glorify you and I magnify you and I humbly come into your presence to a position of being intimate, related in family with a loving daddy. Most people may not have had the privilege of having a loving daddy. A daddy where there is no fear, but there is an intimacy of being able to run to daddy at the sign of any kind of vulnerability or just at the sight. I mean, some people were fortunate enough that, hey, when they heard the, the key going to the, the, uh, the lock or they heard the car drive up, daddy's home. Woo! And they would run into the door. Daddy's here, daddy's here, daddy's here. This is the that kind of attitude right here. Where, where Jesus said, You're no longer 
just, you know, a, 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 a child who has been, you know, redeemed. Okay, yeah, okay, I paid the price for you. But now, now there's an attitude of, I belong. I have an inheritance. It's the old story of Mephibosheth at the table of David where he was rejected and fearful, but no, no, being welcomed in and saying, you belong to me. I'm so glad about it. It is the, the story of the prodigal son coming back home and saying, oh, daddy, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of being at your table anymore. And daddy said, no, I'm so happy you are back. You are No, this is beyond that. This is God saying to you, I do did this and this was my plan from the very beginning no matter what the devil has told you I had you in the heart of my mind my soul you are the apple of my eye and we're going to see today that it was always God's plan to love you and to be one with you and to have you as his child glory to God the apple of his eye and if you will receive this revelation today your life is never going to be the same in Jesus name hallelujah I hope you brought your shouting shoes. Because I'd have preached it one time, and the second time would be better than the first. He says here, he says, we cry. You, you receive my spirit. I have given you my spirit, whereby now you can cry, Daddy, Daddy, not God. Oh, holy and reverent God. Thank God for the reverence of God. We will always reverence God. Honor thy father and thy mother with this is the first commandment. We promise that it may be well with thee and that your days may be well along on the earth. We understand that reverence, but this is an intimacy. This is a love position of I'm my daddy's favorite. I am loved. He would do anything for me. And God says, this is what I have done for you and this is what belongs to you and I need you to receive receive the revelation of this reality he says the spirit himself the Holy Ghost somebody say the Holy Ghost the spirit himself testifies and confirms together with our spirit our born again assured spirit to assuring us that we believers are children of God and if we are his children then we are his heirs also. Hallelujah. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his spiritual blessing and inheritance. Who says you not only are an heir of God, but you're a joint heir with Jesus Christ, and you share his spiritual blessings and inheritance. If indeed, we share in his suffering so that we may also share in his glory. What suffering is talking about? Jesus was persecuted without a cause. It's not talking about being beat up and all. No, no. We know Jesus, no man took Jesus' life, he laid it down. That was all part of the plan. It's not talking about that kind of suffering. It's talking about enduring the persecutions, the afflictions, and all the stuff that comes about by identifying yourself as a Christian. Can I get an amen? It said, if you be willing to endure the pathway of being identified by the world as a Christian. Oh, you one of them holy rollers, huh? Oh, yeah. The, the, Today, people, it used to be popular to be called a Christian. Now, it's like, oh, you a Christian? Oh, you far right thinking, you conservative, you limiting. See, if you be willing to endure what the world brings against you for Christ's sake, then you can enjoy the fruits of being a child of God, an heir of God, and joint heir to the throne of salvation. Everybody, and I need you to say this word with me. Now. Now. Not when it's in the sweet by and by. Now. Just like uh, we saw those in individuals this morning getting their degrees, you can have that now. Well, the world gets that too. No. God has some things in store for those that are following him that are exceeding abundantly above all they can ask, think, or imagine, and he has it for them now. So now that I've given you the review to connect you with today, Today's message is faith to receive God's inheritance. 
faith to receive God's inheritance. Say that when we say faith to receive God's inheritance. I just read to you scripture that says God has an inheritance for you. But many times people don't realize when they are named in an inheritance, what comes along with that? Hallelujah! Grandma, grandpa, somebody left me in their will and they gave me an inheritance. They left me a hundred acres of land and, and, a, and, a, and 50 horses and 25 black Angus and, and, and everything else. Oh, Lord. You happy? It, it is prosperity, but now you have to take care of it. Oh, faith to receive your inheritance. Oh, yeah. Ah, I'm all excited. Oh, then, then all of a sudden you start realizing what is going to be involved in managing my inheritance. See, Adam was given a, an inheritance from God. And the one thing that he needed to understand was how to exercise his faith to maintain it. And all he had to do was maintain the discipline of not eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and keeping his wife and his family from doing that. That was his responsibility. In order to receive the inheritance that God had provided for him, he had to exercise his faith to maintain that separation of purity and oneness with God and not get tainted by the world. Oh, I'm going to preach better than you going to say amen, but I'm going to do it anyway. Hallelujah. Because there is a thief that Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy your inheritance. What God has provided for you, Satan is working 360, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 24, 7, 365 to steal your inheritance. And you must exercise faith by the moment, by the minute, by the hour, by the day in order to maintain your place of authority and dominion for your inheritance glory. Hallelujah. Here, here. The key idea, the big idea, God is immutable. What does that word mean? He does not change. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. And he never affect, affected, he's never affected by our human circumstances. No matter what's going on in your daily life, it doesn't shake God. It doesn't change God. It's not going to impact God. It's not going to overcome God. And if it doesn't overcome God, if you will stay with God and let God be God, it won't overtake you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at James chapter, let's go to the next scripture. James chapter 1 verse 17 says this, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights and with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 says, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. He's all that. You know what I say. Plus my favorite breakfast meal. Exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. This is God's word, and he says, look, I don't change. So if there's any hesitancy, if there's any disconnect between what God's word promises and says for you and what is, it's because we need to do a little checking on where we need to be applying more faith in God in order to receive it. Can I get two hallelujahs? Go with me over to Ephesians chapter 1 as we look at our inheritance from God. Now, I'm just going to show you the Word of God, and we're going to expound on it. And, and when I was over 23 years ago now, um, when I was in Bible school, 
I was assigned in New Testament survey, the book of Ephesians, as my research project. And so I did a, a paper that ended up somewhere between 30, 40 pages tight on the book of Ephesians. I love the book of Ephesians. I learned a lot about the book of Ephesians and still learning a lot about it. But one of the things you will discover in this book is that God has an inheritance for every human being on the planet. And it begins with John 3, 16. It begins by receiving the inheritance. We're going to begin with verse 3 of Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, you remember that in Genesis, when the earth was void and without form, hallelujah, the, God had the Holy Ghost hover over the earth and recreate, reestablish. But this says, even before there was an earth, God laid a cornerstone in the natural. But, and before he laid that cornerstone, he already had you and I in mind. Hallelujah. And, and he built the earth around that cornerstone like he builds the earth, like, like, like a man might build a building with that first cornerstone by which it has to be perfectly set in order for every other part of that structure to be right. Now we know, the Bible tells us, the spiritual cornerstone is Jesus. But here the Bible tells us, before the foundation of the earth, the earth is the earth, God already had an inheritance for you and I. He already had it in his heart and mind. I have blessings, I have provision, I have everything that heaven has for my new sons and daughters on earth. That's why Jesus said, pray that it be on earth even as it is in heaven. There's no lack in heaven. There's no, there's no sickness in heaven. All of the things that we individually stand in faith for is uh, all included in what God had for you from the beginning. Now, has anybody in here ever taken an all-inclusive vacation? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. How many have not had the pleasure of taking an all-inclusive? If you've never had an all-inclusive vacation, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. What is, what, do you not know what an all-inclusive is? An all-inclusive means everything is paid in full. You can, everything that the, the vacation provides, if it's a resort or whatever, if, if you want to go jet skiing, if you want to go parasailing, if you want to go deep sea fishing, uh, if, what, you know, what, whatever that vacation offers, if it's all-inclusive, you can all include it. Hallelujah, you don't have to pay extra. God has an all-inclusive inheritance. Say, my inheritance in Christ is all-inclusive. Everything that you need ever to exist has already been provided in Christ Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. So what we're talking about this morning is an all-inclusive inheritance by faith in Jesus Christ. All you have to do is learn how to exercise your faith for it, and God has already said yes and amen. Glory, hallelujah. The, the challenge is, is that 
when we've been on this faith journey, we've had to break it up. It's so massive, we've had to break it up. Okay, I got to believe God for my healing. I got to believe God for my provision. I got to believe God for my safety. I got to believe God for my marriage. I got to believe God for my children. I got to believe God for my business. I got to believe God for my, we we dissect the all-inclusiveness of the inheritance when God says, it's all yours already. Just put your faith in me and receive what I have already given you. Now, we began this study, for those of you who are just catching up, we started off in the garden where God mapped out for Adam the garden east of Eden. It was so massive. It had every tree that was pleasant for sight and every tree bearing fruit that was good to eat, everything that he needed. It had gold, and, and the gold of Ophir was there. It had all the provision, silver was there. It had rivers with all of the, all of the benefits of rivers. It had everything he needed. It was all inclusive. And it came with God coming in the cool of the evening and personally one-on-one -on -one fellowshipping with Adam. Can you say all-inclusive? And that was what Adam inherited from birth, from the beginning. And the only limitation was don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right next to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't ever forget, in the midst of the garden was also the tree of life. So they had to go on a regular basis to the middle of the garden and eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Just like in heaven, there are trees with the, the uh, healing of the nations all alongside the, the river that flows out of the, the throne of God. Revelation. We will be eating a, a certain herb that sustains life until we have life immortal, eternal. Hallelujah! How God has it all set up. But the Bible says there's healing. There's healing for the nations in the leaves that are lined on a, along the sides of the river that flows out of the throne of God. So there, there was an inheritance, but they had to go there. They had to go there, and they had to maintain the resistance of faith in God. I will do what God said do, and I will not be persuaded to do what God says not to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. He will bring your inheritance to fruition. Now here's another thing. Every person has an inheritance that is tailored uniquely for them. Oh, you missed a good place to shout hallelujah. Depending upon what livelihood, what plan and purpose God has for your life, your inheritance is going to be tailored to fit what your plan, purpose, and pursuit is, and it's going to be different from somebody else's. It may have it will have all of the, the elements of provision and protection and soundness and safety, but it will be unique to you. So you have to pursue your inheritance through a covenant relationship with God so he can show you your inheritance. I'm preaching better than you saying amen. I think it's because you said, oh my goodness. He says, from the foundations of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Go with me to verse 5 and 6. Ephesians verse uh, chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, having predestinated, God already determined this before the foundation of the world. He already set up. He Just like parents that are getting ready to have a baby, we are already putting things in place. We got a 523, a 529C or whatever that is for the college education. We already set money aside. We already have this put in place. God already had predestinated your inheritance to make sure that everything you need was already taken care of and all you had to do was grow into it in faith 
and maturation. You had to get become mature enough to receive the aspects of it. Because some of it, you will not, we're not going to be ready to be able to embrace it and receive it until you get to a certain point in your life. Look what he said. Having predestinated us in, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, his unconditional love, his operational power. You don't have anything to do with this. This is all God just blessing you. Can you receive it by faith? Can you receive it? Can you grow your faith and receive all that God has for you? Or are you going to let the devil steal your inheritance? Are you going to let doubt and unbelief? Are you going to let circumstances of life? you going to allow the, the, all of the things that are going on, the talking heads and all of the stuff that's going around, steal your inheritance? Or are you going to walk by faith and not by sight and let God be God and receive your inheritance? says the good, plug, the, the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glory of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved it's all God God has done this you can't earn it you can't be good enough you can't be smart enough you don't have to be on the right side of the track you don't have the right last name it doesn't make a difference this is all God. Can you receive him? Can you believe him? Can you trust him? Can he trust you? Verse 7 and 8. In whom we have redemption. How? Through his blood. You've been made righteous through his blood. Not through your good works. Not because of your philanthropic works no, or, or, or kindness to the, to, the, to the elderly or, you know, the homeless. No, you can't earn this. This is a gift from God that he had planned from the very beginning of the world. And he made sure you would access it through the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace the riches of his grace, the riches of his grace, the power of God's grace to overcome our despicable mistake, to overcome Adam's foolishness and going and eat, allowing himself to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and cursing all of, his, all of his lineage from that point on. God had a plan whereby he could break the curse of Adam's mistake and bring you back into your inheritance. Glory, hallelujah. And all you have to do is receive it by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, but you don't know the sins of the Father and the generational curse. All that might be true, but the blood of Jesus, but the blood of Jesus, the redemption that we have in Christ Jesus wipes all of that out. He says, in him you live and move and have your being. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own intellect. Don't depend upon your smarts. In all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Exercise faith in God so you can receive God's inheritance that he has for you. It says, wherein he hath abounded. He hath abounded towards us. God's grace, he has abounded toward us. Jesus' grace manifested. I came all the way from heaven to earth 
to abound towards you so that you wouldn't be able to say, I didn't love you. No, I came all the way from heaven and earth, and I robed myself in an earth suit called a body, and I walked the earth as an ordinary man, a carpenter's son, so that I could prove to you that there's no limitation to my love if you will reach out and receive it simply by faith and say, yes, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life, and save me so that I can not only be saved and have everlasting life, but I can receive the inheritance that you have for me right now. Right now. I don't have to wait till the sweet by and by. I can have it right now in the middle of a COVID-19, in the middle of all the, 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 the chaos that's going on with the economy and whoever's in office and all that other stuff. No, look unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of your faith, the immutable God, the God who is and was and forevermore will be when it's all said and done. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord above all the rest. Above all the rest. And you and I will not be able to make any accusations towards him about, well, Lord, I didn't have this. And no, he said, all you needed to do was keep your eyes on me so that, and put your faith and trust in me so I could bring about the manifestation of the inheritance that I preordained before the foundation of the world. I made it so. I declared it to be so before I knitted you in your mother's womb. I declared you to be a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, called out people to show forth the praises of God Almighty who have brought you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Where he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom prudence. Hallelujah. Verse 9 and 10 says, having made known, having made known, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Call it the mystery of his will. Not only did he want you to be the benefactor of an inheritance, he wanted to be one with you. He wanted to be one with you. Father, I pray that they may be one, even as I am in you and you are in me, that they may be made one in us. This is the mystery. Why would the God of creation want to be one with you? Who? What is man that the mountain? that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? Thou hast made him a little Lord and God, and crowned him with loving kindness. And tender mercy. Do you understand who you are in God's mind? In God's eye. Do you understand how valuable and how precious you are to the God of all creation? Do you understand? No good thing will he withhold from you. No good thing. Every good and every perfect thing cometh down from your Abba Father. Daddy! Oh, you have received the spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba Father, Daddy! Daddy, by that same spirit, he signed and sealed the deal to let you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you are the apple of my eye, baby girl. Big boy, I love you. You, you the man. He says, this is the mystery. Christ in you. Not Christ for you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. The Christ in you has got to override the you in you. till Christ be formed in you. Too much of you and not enough of him will keep you from getting your inheritance. Flesh has to die. Ooh, I'm preaching better than you saying amen, but that's all right. That spirit, the spirit of God is just whipping that flesh because flesh will kill. Flesh will cause you to live a defeated life, live 
beneath your privilege. Hallelujah. Goes on to say, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. You see, he, he said, look, these things that, that, that in the dispensation, did I read all the, oh, geez, verse 9, let me go back and read this, God, I don't want to miss it. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Just a couple more scriptures. Verse 11 and 12. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't put, uh, he didn't take a chance on you messing this one up. He said, I'll handle all of the details on this. This is based on me. This is based on my integrity. This is based on me doing this. This is based on me going to the cross and dying. This is based on me going into hell for three days and three nights, coming back up in resurrection power. All you have to do is receive me. And then based on me, you get everything that I wanted you to get. And all you need to do is receive Jesus. That we should be to the praise of his glory. That we should be to the praise of the glory. The world needs to see a blessed body of Christ. And give so that we can say, when they say, how come you so blessed? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is healer. How did you get out of that situation? Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I have an inheritance. Hallelujah. It says that we should be to the praises of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Last scripture. In whom ye also trusted. After that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed. You heard it. And you believed it. You were sealed. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. God says, I'm sealing you with my spirit, my Holy Ghost. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead seals you. Lives big on the inside of you. Stop looking at you and look to see Jesus. Get beyond the cracks and crevices in your eyes and, and, and look, look with the eye of the Spirit and see Jesus Christ risen in resurrection power, working his good will and pleasure in you. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. God has an inheritance for you. Do you have the faith? in God to receive it. He says, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our, the earnest word is down payment, which is the down payment. God put his spirit on the inside of you as a down payment. I give you the best, and then I give you all the stuff later on. Why? Seek ye first me and my righteousness, and all your inheritance shall be added unto you. God said, keep first things first. Get me. I'm going to make sure. I ain't going to leave it up to you to make a decision. No, when you say yes to Jesus, I'm coming in. I'm moving in. I'm moving in. The moment you say, Jesus, here I am. I'm moving in. I'm not going to leave any space for you to mess it up. 
I'm going to give you a brand new born again spirit and then I'm moving in. And we are going to work the deal of your inheritance so that you can't mess it up. Hallelujah. We already seen that movie once before. I'm not going to give it a chance again. We don't want to see the rerun of that. He says, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. You've been paid for in full. There is no debt. There is no deb debit on this account. It's already paid in full unto the praise of his glory. Abraham's faith progression. Now, listen to me. I only have so many days, excuse me, days to, to teach and preach. So I'm doing it on Sunday, then I come back on Tuesday, then I come back on Wednesday, and then I come back on Sunday. So there's two more messages that if you weren't on Tuesday and you weren't on Wednesday, you missed out on. And it is the progression of following Father Abram, who became Abraham. How did God get Abram to work his faith to receive his inheritance? Step by step. The first thing he said, separate yourself from your daddy. Your daddy's into idol worship, and he's stiff-necked, and he's hard, or whatever God said. I need you to move out, and if you will do this, I will bless you. I will bless your name. I will bless your, your lineage. and hey, you, All the families of the world or the earth will be blessed through you. Hallelujah. God declared his inheritance. And then Abram acted in faith, and he left. Obedience to God is better than sacrifice. God moves, you have to move. God gives a directive, you have to obey. You, how do you do it? You do it by faith in God. Faith to receive your inheritance. It was his inheritance. But you know what he did? He took Lot. Because he needed some manpower. He already had manpower. He already had the individuals that were with him, but he wanted, or he allowed, his lot, lot to go. We, 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 this is in Tuesday and Wednesday's teaching. You know the first thing that happened? God began to say, look, he takes them to a, a spot. Say, look, I'm going to show you the parameters of your inheritance. See where you're standing? That's where it begins. On the east. This is, this is on the, the, the west side. Hallelujah. The first thing that Abram does, and this is the primary reason I believe that God chose Abram. Abram built an altar of worship as a marker. Okay, this is, uh, instead of using a fence to, to mark, or some stones to, you know, to, to mark, mark the parameters of what God has promised me, I'm going to build an altar of worship. God said, okay, let's go, let's go to, the, to the east now. We're going over to the other side. We're going to the other side of the mountain. Mark, marking west and east. So he gets on the other side of the mountain and say, okay, here's the parameter. This is the boundary over here. Guess what Abram does? He builds an altar of worship to the God who is outlining his inheritance. You must have a life of worship. The hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper must worship God in spirit and in truth. Unashamedly, hey, and when God bless me, I'm not going to be ashamed to let everybody know Jesus is Lord, glory, hallelujah. God is moving him in my life, hallelujah. Then God said, okay. But, but now God says, okay, I need you to go south. Go south. He started going south, and there's a famine. There's a famine. And he's going towards Egypt. And, and, and ultimately, he, he gets, they start getting close to Egypt. And he said to his fine wife, hallelujah. 
listen, babe, you are fair. That's the terminology they used back then. You are beautiful. You are gorgeous. You are lovely. And you're so fine even at this age that if they see you, they're going to knock me off and take you. So let's come up with this plan. Let's come up with this plan. Tell them I'm your brother. <laughs> so we can, get through the, we can get through Egypt and keep going. Why? Because he knew him as a God of inheritance, but he didn't yet know him as a God of protection. So Pharaoh takes, the deal go down. Pharaoh say, oh, this your, okay, this, this your sister? Okay, I'm going to give you an endowment, uh, a dowry, a dowry of all these sheep and all these cattle and everything. I'm paying you for her. She's fine enough. To, I mean, she worth double, double, double the cost. Hey, he gives him all this, and then, hey, takes, take, takes his wife in, into his um, chambers, and God says, if you touch her, you are a dead man to Pharaoh. Spoke to Pharaoh, an uncircumcised, non-covenant person. God can speak to your enemies on your behalf. Don't, if you touch her, you a dead man. And to prove it, I'm going to allow a little plague to come into your house. Plague start coming to his house. Pharaoh said, call that man over here. Why did you lie to me and tell me that this was your, your sister when this is your wife? Take everything I've given you and get out of here now. They left and Abraham now knew God as a protector. A protector. Not only in this inheritance, not only, not only am I going to provide for you, but I'm going to protect you from your enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they, they, they go down, go, go on down to the south, hallelujah, amen, come, come, come back up. Now he and Lot are so blessed, I mean, they, their stuff is overflowing. He's a God of providing. He, they, they know him as a God of a, more than enough. And all the cattle, I mean, the cattle and, and, and all of the livestock and everything, and, all, and also their Servants and everything are multiplying, and now they start arguing over the stuff. See, stuff always stirs up mess when it's not centered in God. Stuff is the lowest form of God's prosperity. And without God, stuff will destroy you. Money, fame, all that stuff. That's why Matthew 6, 33, out of the mouth of God says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the stuff will be added unto you, and you'll be able to handle it. It won't destroy you. You will control it. So what does he do? To prove that he's not a God of stuff, he says, Lot, hey, God is good. And I, I, and, and, and I believe that he, wherever he takes me, I'm going to be fine. Choose whatever part you want. Take whatever part you want. What part you want? You want, the, you want that part? You want this? He chooses Sodom and Gomorrah, not knowing, not being spiritually led, being fleshly led, being led of greed, being led by, oh, this looks like it's going to be the best part for me. Rather than trusting God and saying, God, where should I go? See, if the covenant wasn't between God and Lot, it was between God and Abram. And even though Lot got blessed on the, on the, on the, the coattail of his uncle, he didn't have the relationship of worship. And it led him into Sodom and Gomorrah. It led him eventually into captivity where his uncle had to come and save him and his wife and all of his stuff. And we'll look at all that in the days to come in Jesus' name. Every head bowed, every head closed. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we do thank you. We praise you. We give you.